morning everyone i ashna kumalkar we pleased to witness you all here in this event of mit hd conclave 2023 uh, it's my immense pleasure to welcome you all for the last day of the conclave 2023 on behalf of mit school of distance education uh, i welcome all the participants once again my staff mit hd our director sir our today's speakers in the conclave we are truly delighted to, with your presence sir uh, so today students we have with us the first speaker of of the day mr vikas dhavan so i'll give you a small introduction of him uh, it is my pleasure to introduce you sir firstly uh, who is the sir is an entrepreneur futurist and essential a technologist he specializes in implementing digital transformation and web3 technologies in a range of different industry verticals and provide solutions that are mash up of agile path breaking technologies under under the industry 4.0 and industry 5.0 umbrella vikas sir is on the advisory board of premier technological institutions and advises on bridging the industry and academician gap with, with respect to the industry readiness the employability index and especially entrepreneurship development of college grads and post grads please welcome mr vikas dhawan sir a seasoned leader with a passion for empowering teams driving innovation and getting things done so uh, welcome you sir to the spectrum that is the virtual conclave of mit sd 2023 and uh, i over it to you sir now thank you so much thank you so much ashna okay so let me uh, share my screen let me know if all of you can see the screen yes sir we can see okay so supply chain uh, one of you asked a question that was an interesting question a lot of you have many more questions in the uh, chat but i'll take these so most of what you have asked i'll be covering in the session uh, there are quite a few slides so i'll, I'll have to go at high speed because blockchain is a and supply chain both are very vast topics right so here i have to uh, quickly make sure that you all get an idea of what what this entire concept is about and we'll end with a small case study as well so uh, if you all have any questions in between you can put it in chat but end of session definitely we can have a discussion on it and uh, if you don't get opportunity in the discussion you can always connect on linkedin and you can ask your questions so let's begin this is what we are going to cover today supply chain management and its inefficiencies in other words why we need feel the need to bring a technology to solve these inefficiencies right what are those inefficiencies and then we'll cover the basics of blockchain how it is evolving uh, we'll cover who are the players in the blockchain ecosystem uh, how blockchain is relevant to supply chain management we'll have a small case study and we'll look at what are the new trends coming in now so blockchain like you know is not very old it started around 2010 or so 2009 2010 so it's a fairly new technology right now so let's start with the supply chain management and its inefficiencies so supply chains are nothing new right uh, they were a critical aspect of many military campaigns for example even if you think of the ancient roman empire right so if you looked at a roman legion it's like today you would have a, a unit it was called a legion in those days it would consist of 5000 soldiers and if four legions were say marching together that would be like 20000 soldiers which is quite a huge amount but actually it's not a large army right typically a large army would have uh, close to 80000 1 lakh soldiers even in those times so i'm talking about like 2000 years back right and since there were so many people you know they had to carry their food with them that is they would carry primarily these four things wheat vinegar beverage and salt so vinegar uh, all of you know so beverage was basically it was uh, it was like a wine which was highly diluted so uh, it was something that would uh, serve as antiseptic as well so that's why that carried that to them and salt and of course the fodder for their animals so how many tons of food do you think would be consumed every day 20000 soldiers right it's actually quite a lot so if even if you take a basic calculation of each soldier needing 3000 calories of which two third had to come from bread that's 1 kg of bread per soldier per day okay and for 20000 soldiers it was like 20 tons per day and for the remaining one third so like we said two third of calories came from bread and for the remaining one third calories let's say five tons more per day right and if the army was marching from rome to somewhere in germany right so they had conquered most of europe like you know 
about a thousand kilometers, it would take them 20, uh, 50 days, even if they marched 18, 20 kilometers per day. Right? So that means for 50 days, you have to carry so much food, right? So this comes to almost 1250 tons of food plus animal fodder plus weapons, which is like 1,500 tons of food, okay? 1,500 tons, if you think even in modern times, one truck can carry about 10 tons. So this is like 150 trucks. And 2,000 years back, they didn't even have trucks. So imagine if you were a Roman commander, how would you construct or manage such a supply chain? So remember, if the supply chain is not efficient, if soldiers don't get food to eat, they're going to rebel or they're going to desert, right? Or they'll not be in a good condition to fight uh, the other side, right? So even in ancient times, these supply chains were really important. And we, if you go through history, there are cases where people like uh, Napoleon or Hitler, uh, they suffered major reverses. That is, they lost wars because they could not manage their supply chain when they invaded Russia, right? So these people invaded Russia, went deep into Russia, and uh, the Russians pretended to fall back when Napoleon was... Uh, uh, attacking. They pretended to fall back, but actually they were just circling around, right? They were circling around and uh, once Napoleon's army was deep into Russia, they circled around and cut off the supply chain from the back, right? And most of Napoleon's army had to starve. They starved and died and it was winter as well, right? So supply chain has been a really critical aspect uh, since ancient times. So when did the modern supply chain emerge? This was in the about 100 years back, 1910s, 1920s, based on the pioneering work of Taylor. And in, uh, in the 1920s, Henry Ford implemented the concept of the assembly line at Ford Motors. So this, if any of you remember the history, was the second industrial revolution when uh, assembly line and electricity were added into manufacturing, right? So most of this assembly line was based on Taylor's theories of time and motion studies and scientific management of workers. So when uh, products started being uh, mass produced, that's when uh, they realized that they would have to start selling outside the country, right? So they expanded to overseas markets and that gave birth to the modern day supply chains. So at that time, in the 1920s, 1930s, the goal of supply chain was to deliver the right product to the right place at the right time and at the lowest cost. So it was still very simple in those times. And then in the 1970s, that's about 50 years back, is when businesses started facing many challenges. One is they had globalized to many countries, so they had to deal with really complex supply chains that covered multiple countries and cultures. There was increased competition. Now the competition uh, was not just within the country. Since they were globalizing, they had to face competition from other parts of the globe as well, right? And then there were rising customer expectations. Customers began to demand more accurate timely delivery. And so businesses were under pressure to improve their supply chain efficiency. And lastly, new technologies such as barcodes and computers. So 1970s, 1980s, this was the uh, third industrial revolution. This is when computers and primitive automation entered the manufacturing industry, right? And these made it possible, these technologies made it possible, or they provided the means for, for businesses to uh, apply basic automation and bring in more efficiency into their supply chains. And then 80s and 90s is when it really evolved. In fact, supply chain management didn't exist as a term till about 1983, right? And 1980s also saw a lot of new technologies coming in. So personal computers came in, barcodes came in. And if you look at the 90s, uh, uh, around the mid 90s, World Wide Web came in, right? I think around 93, 94, the World Wide Web started, which allowed people to have a graphic user interface on the internet, right? And we saw the rise of e-commerce. So uh, in the late 1990s, there was a big boom. It was There was something called the dot-com boom when uh, this e-commerce really started around the world. Of course, at that time, the technology was not existing for, uh, uh, that is the internet connection was too slow and uh, the supply chains were not well developed. And there was no uh, good integration with uh, third-party systems at that time. And so e-commerce did not take off 
very well at those times, right? But then it made a comeback in the uh, 2020s, particularly during the pandemic, when it really flourished because people didn't have any other choice. That was number one. Number two, we also had the technologies. We had the technologies with which uh, e-commerce could uh, 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 fulfill its uh, the promise it showed 20 years back. Then the 1990s also saw the, uh, saw the growth of uh, green initiatives or sustainability initiatives. That is, uh, that's the time when people started uh, getting concerned about the effect of uh, manufacturing and supply chain practices uh, on the environment, right? So uh, most people at that time, most companies uh, would not take up uh, green initiatives because they felt that if you're doing something extra, then it's going to cost them more. But then uh, they slowly realized that when you say your supply chain is green or lean, that means that you are uh, reducing the waste in the supply chain, right? So when you are reducing the waste, obviously the cost is going to come down. So that was one uh, reason why companies started adopting these sustainability initiatives. Second was the regulations that came in. So most countries put regulations in place to protect the ecology and the environment and forced companies to become more sustainable in their manufacturing practices. So what are issues in current supply chains, right? One is lack of transparency. Why is there lack of transparency? Because there are so many players in a supply chain, right? A supply chain is built of uh, so many different entities. It is not just the manufacturer and the end consumer. Uh, before the manufacturer, there are uh, people who supply components and raw materials. Even after the manufacturer, there could be uh, stockists or distributors or wholesalers and retailers before it gets to the end consumer. Of course, uh, internet is disintermediating. That is, it is removing the middlemen or middle people uh, from all supply chains. But then uh, still, since there are so many parties involved and each of them are uh, uh, making the entries in their own systems. So somebody, uh, so different entities cannot look at each other's systems, right? They have privacy and secrecy issues. They may have trade secrets. They may not want, for example, a seller does not want uh, the next stage buyer to know what is his cost of purchase, right? Because uh, then the buyer would negotiate much harder if they knew the real profit margin. So there's a lack of transparency. There's very limited visibility on what happens. A part of limited visibility is also because of uh, the technology not being fully implemented in supply chains. Uh, record keeping is uh, inefficient or even if it is inefficient, even if it's efficient, uh, it is on centralized databases. That means it is uh, on the database of a company uh, which is uh, located either on premises or on the cloud, right? So, uh, and then many companies are maintaining their own records. So there are variations, uh, the data is fragmented, there are potential errors and inconsistencies, uh, all of which come about because people don't want to share the data with each other uh, due to a lack of trust among participants. And then there are also uh, the problem of fake products, which infiltrate supply chains due to absence of reliable and tamper-proof system to verify the authenticity of the goods. Say, for example, if you look at pharma industry, right? So they have manufactured genuine, let's say, vaccine. But uh, somewhere uh, during the supply chain, there are people who uh, uh, might uh, add fake uh, vaccines in it, right? So the fake vaccines can infiltrate the supply chain and it could cause loss of lives at the consumer end. So, the, so t if you look at the uh, time before the, uh, say, the third industrial revolution, we really, which is the 1970s and 1980s, we really didn't have the technology to take care of all of this. And then again, the payment process were very complex. They involve multiple points of payment at every stage, which leads to delays, high transaction costs, and increases risk of fraud as well. So the more the number of uh, parties uh, that are involved in the supply chain, the more porous it becomes. And higher is the risk of fraud because you're opening up your system to so many people in the supply chain, or you're connecting to other so many other systems in the supply chain. Then there was inadequate traceability. So to give an example of what is traceability, let's say a car manufacturer uh, uh, makes a batch of cars which have a faulty braking system, right? 
Now, the moment they come to realize that uh, the braking system is faulty in some cars, they have to be able to trace back. Right? They have to trace back and uh, know which batch it has come from or which couple of batches it has come from, who are the workers who worked on it. And uh, they need this information because they may need to pull back the cars and say, please bring your cars back so we can fix this before you have a dangerous accident. Right? So this traceability was not there. It was completely missing. And then supplier management was very, very primitive. And managing suppliers' compliance with regulations, certification, ethical standards was very intensive and challenging. So why was this required? Uh, why do you need suppliers' compliance? So uh, the European Union, for example, came up with laws which said that uh, even if you have third parties which are to whom you have outsourced part of your process, still the company or the manufacturer in Europe is still responsible for uh, their outsourcing party complying with the EU regulations, right? And for the European companies to look at this and to ensure it takes place was very labor intensive and challenging. They had to send somebody, if it was India, for example, they had to send somebody all over, uh, all the way to India, right? They had no way to trace this. They had no way to control it either. I can, there's something in chat. Yes, there was no legal protection to the customer. Uh, that is true. If you look at a, so earlier we looked at a very uh, primitive uh, definition of uh, supply chain management. A more modern one would be uh, to look at it as the handling of the entire production of flow of a good or service through the supply chain to maximize quality, maximize delivery. Okay, somebody has raised a hand. Do you have a question? Yes, uh, good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning. Sir, actually, uh, my question is, uh, I am, uh, uh, I have doing, I'm sorry, I, have, I am uh, doing the course in PGDN uh, from uh, project management from these uh, MIT institutes. Okay. Uh, but uh, my elective paper is supply chain and management. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if uh, I'm, my uh, current role is uh, 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 in execution part, project execution. But uh, I know detail about the uh, procurement system, but sure. I am not uh, directly in that role. Okay. But I would like to change uh, my uh, uh, total uh, uh, in supply chain management. So can I shift it uh, after doing this course? Uh, can you please, uh, yes, definitely can shift your... it. But I'll I'll answer this question again at the end of the session. It was not directly related to the topic, right? Okay, okay. somebody is asking for Hindi. Okay, are you okay, Sahabuddin, if I take it at the end? Okay. okay. Uh, here I'm looking more for questions which are related to what I'm talking about. But okay. supply chain, mein koi bhi question ho, feel free to ask. Okay. okay. Uh, here you. you're asking for personal advice. I'll surely give it at the end of the session. Okay, sir. thank you. Okay, AK is asking for Hindi. Are everyone comfortable with Hindi? Because many times there are people yes, from sir. other parts of India who are not very comfortable. So okay. I'll do one thing. I'll mix both Hindi and English. Okay. I think that is fine. Okay. So somebody is saying no. A lot of people are saying no as well. English. Okay. So you can use both languages. I can use English. both or kuch samajh aaya, just feel free to ask. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So the goal is to maximize quality, maximize delivery. Maximize the customer experience. This is the king of everything, right? If the customer is not very happy with the experience, uh, they are not going to come back. And then uh, maximize the profitability and maximize your competitive advantage. So somebody is asking question, how is SCM responsible for verifying supplier compliance? So by regulation, laws the person who is uh, the company which is outsourcing to or uh, outsourcing part of the process to vendors or they're purchasing something from suppliers. They have to ensure that their suppliers of components or raw material are also complying with regulation. And I'll cover this in more detail. So here, uh, this question directly relates to ethical sourcing. Okay, ethical sourcing, uh, let's say uh, you're, somebody is making electric cars, right? Or uh, electric cars could see lithium batteries, right? Now, where does lithium come from? It comes from South America, comes from Africa. But in both fields, mein, uh, 
बहुत सारे माइंस में दे एक्सप्लॉयड द लेबर और दे यूज चाइल्ड लेबर और दे यूजिंग प्रैक्टिस विच डैमेज द एनवायरमेंट सो वॉट द रेगुलेशन से इज दैट इफ यू आर सोर्सिंग लिथियम देन मेक श्योर दैट यू आर सोर्सिंग फ्रॉम एथिकल सोर्स if it is coming from someone who is known to be damaging environment if it is coming from someone who is using child labor if it is coming from someone who is exploiting labor then you cannot use the lithium so in this way and i'll cover that in more detail in this way uh, the uh, supply chain management of any uh, uh, producer of goods or services has to incorporate the practices of the supplier as well so i hope that is clear uh parag i hope you are clear on that i'll cover this in more detail uh, in future slides so major objective of using blockchain one is to provide traceability i spoke about why it's important you need transparency which is not there everybody is secretive about their information we need disintermediation so in the old days let's say like 30 years back we had Uh, too many people in between you had a manufacturer then you had a uh, distributor then you had a stocklist then every city you had a wholesaler then you had a retailer finally it came to consumer so and there could be other intermediaries in between as well so the problem with uh, having too many intermediaries is that ye har ek ka apna profit margin hai right so the cost to end consumer becomes too high so you know in modern business the people who can disintermediate the people who can reduce the intermediaries between them and the end customer they will be able to reduce their cost and if they able to reduce the cost obviously they can uh, be more competitive in the market so disintermediation is very important then improve data security so like you know uh, there's been lot of uh, there are cases of ransomware where uh, a hacker gets control of your data then ask for a ransom or there are uh, cases of uh, data being stolen or data being hacked or mischievously changed as well so improved data security is very important in the supply chain uh, improved is actually a uh, too small a word you need to be 100% sure that your uh, data is uh, data is accurate it's very very important then you need some kind of transaction automation so supply chain like some of you are from supply chain background uh supply chain is like a big black hole and i worked about 5 years uh, on supply chain optimization for american company uh, uh a little while back uh, it was actually 2000 uh, in the early 2000s right so at that point uh, we were creating technology solutions to optimize the supply chain and uh, what i could see then and what i can even see now is there is there is endless scope of improvement in the supply chain matlab wherever you see you will find inefficiencies that can be improved and i'm not saying about experts you know it's not just experts but even uh, even the people who are uh, not experienced in supply chain management even they if they look at a simple process when if you look at the processes in supply chain today you may be shocked and you'll say are ye to this so easy to do why are they not doing it like this right so that transaction automation needs to come in and the new trend that is all of you would have heard the term digital transformation from last 3 4 years businesses are getting digitalized so uh, from 2000 uh, early 2000s what happened or late 90s businesses started digitizing that means digitizing ka matlab hai <coughs> okay somebody is asking please explain the meaning of blockchain yes uh, i'll be explaining that it's coming in future slides uh, is supply chain management and material management different yes they are different uh, but i need to know exactly what you're asking material management is completely different supply chain management is it's got a wider scope part of material management may fall under supply chain so supply chain is like a bigger umbrella material management would be part of your supply chain management okay and then somebody is spoken about uh, why digital supply chain now is required to solve these problems okay what do you see on the slide so i'm reading from the chat so to solve these problems is why you need uh, why you need a digitalized supply chain so like all businesses uh, so all businesses around the world now they 
know that digitalization or digital transformation is what can improve their business, you know, bring them more customers or lower their cost, yeah, improve top line or reduce the bottom line, in other words. Now, what will happen if the companies are digitalized, but the way they communicate are not, right? The way, uh, so like, you know, supply chain, uh, there are a couple of things that go through it, right? What are things that travel through supply chain? Can anyone put it in chat? What are the things that supply that travel through a supply chain? Anyone? Goods, yes. Goods travel one way, right? So raw material, yes, that's all part of goods. What else? So if one side goods are traveling, what comes from the other side? Cash is correct. So money comes from the other side. And then there's a third aspect. So, so documents, demand forecast, the, in other words, you're referring to information. So these are three things that go through supply chain, right? You have uh, the goods or services, you have the uh, money, and you have the information. Yes, I'll go bilingual. So service industry, maybe uh, same thing will apply. <clears throat> so service industry ka bhi supply chain uh, will work the same way and it has to manage the same way also. So uh, these three things pass through it. Uh, in the old days from times immemorial, from thousands of years, these were the three things that travel through supply chain. It was information, money, and goods, right? Services came later. Uh, so the new trend is that jo information hai, that is getting fused with material. So material is becoming smart material. Matlab ki agar component hai, it has to go into, let's say, a machine right, in the manufacturing process. So this component, it will have a chip on it, which, in which, uh, so that that uh, component knows that I have machine fit in which machine and what manufacturing process hona chahiye. And it will track the manufacturing process. So if the manufacturing process is not properly followed, or if that component ends up in wrong machine, then it will send an alert through IoT, right? It'll send an alert saying Ki, there is some mistake. So that is the new trend happening. That is uh, information and material are getting fused. So these are reasons why we need to use blockchain SCN. So let's look at some blockchain basics, okay? So I'm I'm just putting chat off. If there's uh, something important, somebody please uh, tell me uh, because we are falling behind on the timing. So what I promise you is all your questions I will answer in the end if we have the time, okay? So in 2008, there was a white paper by Satoshi Nakamoto, okay? Now, nobody knows ye Satoshi Nakamoto Hekot, right? Is it one person? Is the group of people? Is the company? Nobody knows. But this, uh, someone with this name uh, published a white paper called a peer to peer electronic system or Bitcoin, right? Peer to peer ka kya matlab hai? Peer to peer ka matlab hai ki, let's say uh, I'm making payment to you, A is making payment to B, right? Uh, typically, what happens? There is a trusted intermediary like a financial institution or a bank in, in between, right? So let's say you're doing net banking, okay? So you'll go to your bank, transfer a payment to your friend, right? So when A transfers money to B, it, it is going through a, a centralized institution, a financial institution. So uh, that is a centralized system. But what is a peer-to-peer -peer system? Peer-to-peer -peer A makes a payment to B, or B's where koi bank nahi hai ya koi financial institution nahi hai. Directly from A to B, the payment can go, right? So that was the start of this concept of uh, Bitcoin, okay? 2009 was the first successful Bitcoin transaction. That is somebody purchased pizza, okay? If you see this guy with two kids, he two pizza, 10,000 Bitcoin, okay? 10,000 Bitcoin ke liye. And this is not very long back, just 2010. Do you know what is the value of one Bitcoin today? One Bitcoin is 25 lakh rupees, right? One Bitcoin is 25 lakh rupees. So, 10,000 Bitcoin is how much? How much? Can you all figure out and tell me? It is like 2,500 crores, right? That means 2,500 crores of pizza. 
So funny part is even the person who sold the pizza, even he disposed of the Bitcoin very cheaply. So us work, 10,000 Bitcoin. So BTC is the currency code. Just like Indian rupee ka INR. Hai. I say BTC is the uh, currency code for Bitcoin. Okay. So 10,000 Bitcoin ka tab value tha 41 dollars. Or today, like I said, today it's uh, 25 lakh rupees each, right? One Bitcoin. So 2,500 crores is the value today. And it was even higher. Matlab, if you look at end of 2021, that time there was a boom. So uh, Bitcoin is $30. At that time, it was $65,000. Right? The current value is half of uh, what it was two years back. So this was the first transaction. Uh, and then... 2010, the first Bitcoin exchange was established. Exchange ka hai, just like you have a stock exchange where people buy and sell stocks. So what's a Bitcoin exchange where people can buy and sell uh, cryptocurrency? Of course, 2010, mein, there was only one cryptocurrency called Bitcoin. So people would come there and buy and sell Bitcoin. And then 2011, other crypto came in like Litecoin, Namecoin, uh, Namecoin etc. Today, there are thousands and thousands of uh, different cryptocurrencies. Then 2000. Well, there's something called halving in Bitcoin. So let's see what that means. Halving ka matlab hai ki jab ye start wa Bitcoin uh, mining. So I'll explain what mining is. It's coming in next slides. But basically mining ka matlab hai ki uh, the people who are in the Bitcoin network, jab bhi koi transaction hota hai, somebody needs to validate ki transaction thik hai ki nahi, right? So the person who validates is called the validator or miner. Okay. Up to key is the Thora Kam Kia. He is validated, he or she validated a transaction. So they were given a reward, right? So those are law may, they used to give them 50 Bitcoin as a reward for validating a new block of transactions. But so uh, they also made a rule because then too many Bitcoins were getting generated, right? So they made a rule key every time 2 lakh 10,000 blocks are mined. Approximately every four years. Jab, and block also I'll explain. But basically, block is a data structure just make it transactions are recorded. Okay. So ek, ek, uh, block may some jo transaction. Hote. So once that two and a half three thousand is over, then you have to create a new block. Just may nine transaction, nine, right? So when a transaction is done, let's say A sends money to B or as a Hajaro transaction, right? So these transactions need to be validated by somebody called a validator or miner. So there's a process by which they will validate and then they will broadcast to network because the moment the transaction is broadcast on the blockchain network, but I say both are who want to mine it. They all want to earn the money, right? So it's like a race. So all of them are in a race ki jaldi se jaldi ye transaction validate karna or naya block banana hai. Because जो भी सबसे पहले बनाएगा ब्लॉक दैट पर्सन ओनली गेट्स अ रिवार्ड अभी द फर्स्ट पर्सन हु कंप्लीट्स मेक्स द ब्लॉक एंड बट बिफोर ही कैन गेट अ रिवार्ड दैट हैज टू बी वैलिडेटेड नाउ देयर आर सो मेनी अदर पीपल हु आर आल्सो वर्किंग ऑन इट राइट एंड दे आर फीलिंग लिटिल फ्रस्ट्रेटेड कि मेरे को नहीं मिला किसी और को मिल गया सो ऑल ऑफ देम आर गोइंग टू चेक ये ब्लॉक बना है ठीक बना कि नहीं बना राइट सो थाउजेंड्स एंड थाउजेंड्स ऑफ पीपल विल चेक दैट ब्लॉक more than half of the network will check it. Okay. Network ka hai, all the computers and miners who are on the Bitcoin network. Okay. Network money is just a network of computers around the world. Okay. Just like uh, we are sitting on computers or devices which are connected to internet and we could be anywhere, right? I could be anywhere. People who are listening could be anywhere. So just like that. So uh, once they validate ki ha ye thik hai, ye transaction thik hai, then that new block is created or just the subset pale validate kya tha, usko reward milta tha, right? So the person in 2009 used to get 50 BTC. But then they made this rule ki after 2 lakh 10,000 blocks are mined, uske baad the reward will become half. Okay? So why did they do that? Because they felt ki agar bo jada Bitcoin a jai market mein, then the uh, simple uh, law of supply and demand. If there's too much supply, then the price will fall, right? They didn't want the price to fall. So they said, Ki, nahi, we have to control it 
बिटकॉइन को धीरे धीरे रिलीज करो सडनली बहुत सारा नहीं निकलना चाहिए राइट सो एवरी फोर इयर्स दे रिड्यूस द रिवॉर्ड टू हाफ बाई हाफ टू फिफ्टी से ट्वेंटी फाइव ट्वेंटी फाइव से ट्वेल्व पॉइंट फाइव ट्वेल्व पॉइंट फाइव से सिक्स पॉइंट टू फाइव ऐसा राइट एंड एट द सेम टाइम ये जो वैलिडेशन का प्रोसेस है दे मेक इट मोर डिफिकल्ट सो एवरी टाइम दे हाफ द रिवॉर्ड दे मेक द प्रोसेस ऑल्सो मोर डिफिकल्ट माइनिंग का सो इट नीड्स मोर इलेक्ट्रिसिटी इट नीड्स मोर कंप्यूटिंग पावर सो द रीजन फॉर दिस वॉज प्राइमरीली टू लिमिट द सप्लाई टू क्रिएट अटी क्योंकि जब स्केरसिटी है तो देन द वैल्यू विल इंक्रीज राइट सो अ गुड एग्जाम्पल ऑफ दिस यू कैन सी इन द डायमंड इंडस्ट्री फॉर एग्जाम्पल सो लाइक सम ऑफ यू मे नो दर इज अ कंट्री कॉल्ड बोर्ड स्वाना इन साउथ सदर्न पार्ट ऑफ अफ्रीका एंड ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ वर्ल्ड डायमंड कम फ्रॉम देर ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट एक ही कंट्री से आता है राइट सो द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ बोर्ड्स वाना टाइड अप विद डायमंड मैन्युफैक्चरर मैन्युफैक्चरर का मतलब है दे नॉट क्रिएटिंग डायमंड बट दे पॉलिश इट कट इट क्रिएट इट एंड देन दे सेल इट टू अदर्स राइट सो दे आर दे आर दे प्रोसेस द डायमंड एंड सेल सो कंपनी कॉल डी बी एस तो द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट डी बी एस डेट इज दे सेट की आपका प्रोडक्शन बहुत ज्यादा है राइट ये प्रोडक्शन को कम करो अगर प्रोडक्शन कम नहीं किया तो डायमंड का वैल्यू चल जाएगा राइट सो इवन अदरवाइज लाइक मेनी ऑफ यू नो डायमंड इज लाइक आर्टिफिशियली प्राइस प्रोडक्ट मतलब इसका कोई इंटेंसिक वैल्यू है नहीं इट इज इट्स नॉट लाइक गोल्ड दैट इज नो मैटर वॉट हैपन्स गोल्ड हैज अ सर्टन वैल्यू राइट एंड इवन इफ यू लुक एट इवन द स्मॉल विलेजेस इन इंडिया पीपल नो की दिस इज अ स्टोर ऑफ वैल्यू फॉर एमरजेंसी सो एवरीबडी बाइज गोल्ड इन इंडिया इट गिव्स सेम इन चाइना इज वेल बट दैन डायमंड का ऐसा नहीं है so for example if you buy gold today and you want to sell it tomorrow you may lose a small small amount because of difference between buying rate and selling rate but samjho aapne diamond kharida aaj aur kal bechna hai diamond right you will not even get half the price because every person who sees a diamond will value it in a different way right it's not like acha ye kitna carat gold hai ye 22 carat hai 18 carat hai 20 carat hai 24 carat hai each character kya rate hai so that's highly that's highly highly standardized around the world right of course there are variations in price but the way you measure gold is standardized around the world but uh, in precious stones this standardization even though they talk of the six c's uh, the cut uh, color carat etc uh, still there's no uniformity on valuation matlab if two jewelers look at the same uh, diamond each may give a different value right so वॉट डी एफ जी एस डेट इज दे रिड्यूस द सप्लाई एंड सेट ठीक है अपना माइनिंग थोड़ा कम करो स्लो करो इफ यू रिलीज टू मनी डायमंड प्राइस विल कम डाउन सो द सेम लॉजिक द यूज हियर दैट इज इफ टू मनी बिटकॉइन कम टू फास्ट इन टू द मार्केट द वैल्यू विल कम डाउन राइट सो टू थिंग्स रिलेटेड वन इज एवरी फोर ईयर्स दे रिड्यूस द रिवॉर्ड एंड एट द सेम टाइम दे ऑल्सो मेड इट मोर डिफिकल्ट टू डू द माइनिंग और वैलिडेशन and there is also a cap on the total number of bitcoin so number of bitcoin will never exceed 21 million or uh, at the moment we have uh, number of bitcoin in existence is more than 19 million matlab or 2 million uh, banenge it's 19.2 million so let's say 1.8 million or banenge bitcoin uske baad naya bitcoin banna band ho jayega right fir after that uh, no more bitcoin will be mined to fir ये जो वैलिडेटर्स है उनका इनकम कहाँ से आएगा इट बी प्राइमरली फ्रॉम वैलिडेटिंग ट्रांजेक्शन राइट बट दे विल नॉट गेट एनी मोर नो नो न्यू बिटकॉइन विल बी क्रिएटेड आफ्टर दैट सो डिट द हाविंग वर्क टू इंक्रीज द वैल्यू सो लेट्स लुक एट सम फिगर्स सो इफ यू लुक एट द फर्स्ट थ्री फोर इयर्स राइट before they made uh, the reward half yahan pe average price was around 62.5 right uh, or rather the highest price was 62.5 and if you look at the next epoch of 4 years the highest price range was 1250 which is exactly 20 times of this 60 into uh, 20 would be 1200 right so approximately 20 times and then the third epoch when they made it half third time then it rose to 25000 which is again 20 times right 
सो नाउ दे सेइंग कि जब नेक्स्ट टाइम 2024 में जब होगा हाविंग सो दे आर एक्सपेक्टिंग कि 25000 से इट अगेन मल्टीप्लाई 20 टाइम्स इट बिकम 5 लाख बट ऑफ कोर्स ये सिर्फ हाइपोथेसिस है ओके दिस जस्ट अ थ्योरी सो डोंट एक्चुअली गो इन्वेस्ट योर मनी इट मे हैपन लाइक दैट और मे नॉट हैपन आल्सो देयर इज नो वे टू नो somebody is asking can you uh, repeat meaning of bitcoin okay and uh, i am covering that i'll cover it in more detail so uh, that was concept of having then 2013 like 10 years back price of bitcoin reached 1000 dollar jo aaj 30000 dollar hai it was 1000 dollars in 2013 and then the first time the bitcoin exchange got hacked was 2014 2015 uh, a better uh, technology came for blockchain which was the ethereum blockchain right which introduced things like smart contract and d apps which i will cover what these are in coming slides 2021 like i said a peak price tha that is price of bitcoin reached 65000 dollars ar- around end of 2021 and market cap of all cryptocurrency Reach two trillion dollar, which is a huge amount. Two trillion, I mean, it's like in 2021, uh, it was like the uh, GDP of all of UK, right? Was around two trillion. So they gained a lot of value. So if you look from a very uh, high view, so let me explain blockchain before I come to Bitcoin. Okay, so blockchain is a public ledger. It's a distributed ledger technology. There are many. Uh, jargon here which i'll explain next slide uh, so it's a public ledger ka matlab hai you know what is a ledger right they say accounts purane zamane mein used to write in a book which is called a ledger right even now if you go to small shops you will see this red color books in which people write their accounts they'll have a general ledger they'll have a cash book etc right so the digital version of that is also called ledger right so if you are making an entry in tally or you are making an entry in oracle erp देर ऑल्सो यू मेकिंग एंट्रीज इन लेजर तो पब्लिक लेजर का क्या मतलब पब्लिक लेजर का मतलब है कि दिस लेजर सो इफ यू सी द डायग्राम इयर राइट सो दिस आर रिप्रेजेंटिंग डिफरेंट कंप्यूटर्स ऑन द ब्लॉक चेन नेटवर्क ओके ये सब अलग अलग कंप्यूटर है हर कंप्यूटर के ऊपर एक वैलिडेटर या माइनर है राइट नाउ पब्लिक लेजर का मतलब है कि जो भी लेजर में ट्रांजेक्शन रिकॉर्ड हुए उसका कॉपी इज देयर ऑन एवरी कंप्यूटर Every computer has a copy of it. मतलब वो पूरा transaction का list is made public. So that's why it's called a public ledger. That records all the transactions that have ever been made on blockchain, and maintains a continuously growing list of records called block. So I explain what is block, right? So, uh, so that's what blockchain is. So each block contains a cryptographic hash. I'll explain all these words in detail. Okay? What is cryptography? But basically, cryptography means uh let's say in old days uh you are sending a secret message to someone maybe uh you have this case of uh, uh england fighting germany right so uh england has maybe spies in germany and you want to send a secret message to them so you would use something called cryptography to change the uh, message in a way that nobody can understand what it means okay so that's in a very simple way a uh, simple way is what cryptography is uh, it has a hash of the previous block it has a time stamp date and time of the uh, transaction it has a nonce nonce is something you use only once jaise ki if you make a bank transaction and you get a otp which is used only once that is a nonce then vocal root is a technology to speed up the searching uh, speed right to speed up searching among the blockchain records use a technology called vocal root and you have transaction data right so each of these block each block has a uh, record of every transaction every made ever made and the whole of it combines to become a public ledger and this public ledger is shared with everybody who is on the network <coughs> right so blocks are typically linked together in a chain right just say over here instead of computers if you think these are blockchain blocks of blockchain right they are linked together in a chain format right so that's why it is called a blockchain it's a chain of blocks in other words 
So it is secured using cryptography. This means it's very difficult to change the data stored on blockchain. So if you have written some uh, your accounting records in a book, it is possible to go and erase and change something, right? Even if you have recorded it in ERP, in your enterprise resource planning software, like Oracle or SAP, it is difficult to change data that you've entered, but it is possible. If you get the approvals, you can go and change it, right? But then in blockchain, it is impossible completely. Ek baro data enter ho gaya, blockchain ke upar. After that, nobody can change it. It's completely impossible. And I'll explain how it is, why it is impossible. Also, blockchain is decentralized. So this is a major concept in uh, Web3 and cryptocurrency and blockchain. Okay, decentralized ka hai. Remember the example of A making payment to B. Or B mein, there is no bank, right? There's no financial institution. So whenever there is no centralized institution in the middle, it means it is a decentralized network. Decentralized ka kya hai? Nobody owns the whole thing. So for example, a bank has its own network, right? Uh, it has its own channels. These are all owned by the bank. But blockchain, mein, nobody owns these channels. Anybody can make payment to anybody without passing through bank. So uh, that's what decentralized means. And this blockchain is managed by a network of computers that are called nodes. So nodes are matlab hai, all the computers uh, which are controlled by the miners, which are on the blockchain network. So foundation concept of blockchain is, uh, so to answer the question somebody had about what is Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency. It's a kind of currency, just like you have uh, the Indian rupee or US dollar. These are called fiat currency. Okay, Fiat currency means the currency that is issued by the government of the country. But then, uh, so today, even the government can issue uh, even the government can issue digital currency. For example, in India now we have digital version of Indian rupee, right? But usko hum cryptocurrency nahi bolte, right? Because when government is issuing, so then that's a centralized system. The government owns it. The government owns all the system related to that. So it's a centralized system. So it is not called cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is basically on blockchain, which is a decentralized network. So I have some questions. Are these transactions are not regulated? They are starting to be regulated, right? So, her country may there are different regulations for blockchain, right? So, in some countries it's highly regulated. In some company countries it's not regulated. Okay. Other question is why Bitcoin or virtual money are high risk business in financial institution? Uh, well, virtual money is not high risk because even Indian rupee can be virtual money, right? But uh, so when the government issues uh, digital currency, it is called CBDC. That is. Uh, and I'll explain more on what that is. Uh, but it's a uh, it's a centralized uh, it's a digital currency that comes from the centralized bank, right? So that's why it's called a CDBC. So, but Bitcoin is high risk because it is not backed by any asset, right? So in a way, even our uh, other currency. Uh, the Indian rupee or dollar is not backed by any other asset, right? But then the government is guaranteeing that this is worth so much, so much amount. So if you look back about 50 years, uh, up till the 1970s, the uh, implied rule all over the world was that government, government ke paas jitna sola hoga, jitna gold hoga, they can only create currency of that amount, right? But then in 1970, early 1970s, I think around 1972, there was this Bretton Woods agreement where governments agreed that we will no more hold gold as a standard. So even if you don't have gold, you can print a currency. And uh, for example, if you see the US printed about $1 trillion of current of dollars in last one or two years, right? So uh, even though today the fiat currency, the government issued currency, is not backed by asset, but still the government is giving a guarantee. But in case of a cryptocurrency, there's nobody giving a guarantee on it. And there is no asset that is uh, backing it up. So that's why it is risky. Who is control authority of Bitcoin? It is decentralized. So if a controlling authority aage, it becomes centralized, right? So uh, it can never have a control authority for Bitcoin. 
it will always be decentralized does stock market transaction also manage in blocks so stock market transaction or crypto transaction means it is a buying and selling of uh, either the stock or the cryptocurrency but the block a block is the recording of the transaction so both are little different okay uh, what are the other questions bitcoin is good bad for economic growth uh, i'll not comment on that it's too early to say uh, but basically it is speculative so see uh, revenue can be earned by productive activity that is you are manufacturing something uh, let's say you are creating food products that is good for the economy good for the country good for the people but cryptocurrency is purely speculative usme say there is no productive output coming out so in that sense uh, uh, it doesn't contribute to economic growth is how i can put it is this regulated affair department plays role in bitcoin ab jaise if you look at indian government right indian government ye nahi bol raha hai ki ye legal hai ya illegal hai the finance minister only said ki agar aap iske upar paise kama rahe ho you will pay a higher rate of tax agar aapne loss kiya you cannot carry forward the loss right so indian government has not said yet legal hai ya illegal hai but they are saying isse paise kamaya to we will charge you heavily on tax then who uses blockchain system uh, we'll cover that in future slides uh, as this decentralized there are high chance of fraud and scam no actually decentralized may there are lower chances and i'll explain more about it meaning of decentralization is coming right so let's come back to slides so what is decentralized no single entity controls the network matlab na koi google hai na microsoft na azure uh, na amazon nobody is controlling the network okay it's like asking ki who controls internet can anyone tell me who controls the internet there is nobody right this collection of computers jiske upar internet chal raha hai par na koi government isko uh, na koi government ne create kiya nor na koi government has set up the system for it right nor any government can say i own the internet nobody owns it no single entity controls network so just like internet is completely decentralized similarly uh, decentralized is a major concept in web3 so blockchain comes under web3 technologies so blockchain nodes uh, uh, network is distributed across many nodes node ka matlab hai computer right so whoever is there on blockchain uh network so if you want to join the blockchain network basically you have to download some software on your computer or whatever device you have and uh there could be some formalities for you to join but once you join then you become part of blockchain network right so everybody is not part of blockchain network you have to formally join it okay and then you become one of the computers that forms the blockchain network so each node contains a copy of blockchain ledger so blockchain ledger like i said it contains a record of it contains a record of all the transactions right and participants can transact without intermediaries in a trustless system the trustless matlab hai ki i'm not saying ki trust nahi hai but basically trustless means that uh, there is no bank or financial institution in between there is no trusted intermediary without intermediary you can make a transaction so for example uh, if you look at decentralized finance decentralized finance means that there is no financial institution between a peer to peer transaction that is a can transfer money to b without anybody in between so i explained what is a public ledger so distributed ledger again means that the ledger copy is distributed across many computers on the network that's why it is called a distributed ledger technology right so blockchain is a kind of distributed ledger technology so i'm going little faster because they are running out of time uh distributed ledgers are more secure because they are distributed across many nodes so somebody said because it is decentralized it is less safe no because jab bhi koi uh, transactions add ho rahe hain uspe there are thousands and thousands of people who are checking it ki ye transaction sahi hai ki nahi ye block mein transactions are correct or not and because so many people are checking it and because now a copy of this ledger which is all the uh, list of transactions is there on thousands of computers so nobody can go and change anything matlab ek bhi kahi change kiya to instantly people will know so in other words a distributed ledger is a kind of a database 
it's like a data structure in which to store and manage data. And these are owned and controlled by a network of participants. Okay. All work together to validate transactions and maintain the integrity, integrity or honesty of the ledger. This makes it truly decentralized and there's no central authority or intermediary. So block I already explained, right? So each block can hold about one MB of data, right? So when you add transaction, hota hai, every time two and a half uh, or 3000 transactions are accumulated, a new block is formed, right? So this is, uh, this is the uh, block size for Bitcoin, but uh, different cryptocurrency may have different blockchain under it, right? So uh, Bitcoin is the cryptocurrency. Right? or blockchain uske niche ka technology hai, right so even if you are not using bitcoin jo niche ka technology hai, blockchain can be used so basic building blocks of uh, bitcoin is a transaction so for example let's say you transfer a cryptocurrency from a to b this is when the uh, transaction is initiated it is broadcast to the blockchain network Matlab, jinke computers pe wo blockchain ka software hai, right and this network will verify the person paying a sufficient fund or not and applies the rules of that network, which is transaction fee, etc. And then the transactions are added to a block. And when the transaction is done, then this block is uh, broadcast to all the computers on the blockchain network. And like I said, thousands of people will check if this block is correct or not, if the transaction is correct or not. If more than half say it is correct, then it gets added, right? If more than half say ki ye galat hai, then that block will be rejected. It will not be added to blockchain. So the miners get rewarded for adding each block. So mining you need very powerful computers, right? And they have to solve a algorithm. It's a mathematical puzzle. So the person who solves it the fastest, they get to add the new block. Right. So, like I said, this is broadcast to the network. Right. So, how do you get agreement of everyone is called a consensus mechanism. Right. So, I know a lot of jargon coming, but I can't help it. I can't explain without it. So, those of you whose answers are not questioned, feel free to uh, ask questions at the end or ask me on uh, LinkedIn. Okay. So miners compete to be the first to solve the hash puzzle. Whoever is first, they are able to mine the coin. So to participate in miner, suppose you want to be a miner. You have to download that software on a very powerful computer and run the mining software on your computer. If your computer is slow, then somebody will solve it faster than you and they'll get the reward. So it's very important that you have a very powerful computer and you have a uh, enormous source of electricity. We both electricity will use over. Right, so it's very uh, energy heavy. So each block may yield there, right? There is a hash of the previous block. Uh, then there's timestamp nonsense is like a OTP, it's a one time use. Buckle root is a technology to speed up the search. So, yes, a block header may, right? Or head is block a body may have all the transaction data. Yami, you may have going up to 3000 uh, different transactions, right? So hash ka matlab hai ki, you are applying a formula on something. So let me see if I can show you uh, how it works. Give me a minute. So this is like a hashing function. Let's say I put in something here. This is, so I put the word this. Ab iska hash is this. Matlab, some formula is applied to that word and you get a this string of numbers and alphabets. Now by reading this, you can't make out what is written right? So this is how the cryptography works. So let's say I'm saying this is a secret. So even though now from one word I've gone to four words, still length of this is exactly the same, right? So this length is always uniform based on what security mechanism you're using. For example, here you're using SHA-256, which is a security uh, uh, protocol. Now, so here, I can write something and see the hash or I can do a file hash. Matlab, let's say I have a Word document, bana hai, which is a agreement with somebody else, right? It's like a legal agreement. Wo hai, hash hai, now, look at this. Even if I 
make any change, let's say I convert this S to capital S, okay? The hash immediately changes. If you see at the bottom, hash is changed now. Even if I put a full stop, hash has changed. Even if I put a space, hash changes. In other words, एक बार कोई फाइल या कोई मैसेज का हैश ले लिया, right? उसके बाद the recipient will check the hash. If hash is same as earlier, then nobody has changed anything. If anybody has changed even small part of it, the hash will change. Okay. So uh, this is very impossible to crack. That is, it's uh, practically impossible that uh, two kind of input can have same kind of hash. It has never been known to happen. So this really safe way of knowing that uh, the uh, nobody has tampered with the data. Okay. Let me share the thing again. So you have a hash of the previous block. I mean, this block का जितना भी data है. Uh, let's say it's a file of around 1 MB. So 1 MB file ka hash banaya, like you saw. And this hash is put into the header of the next block. So whenever a new block is created, first of all, they'll check apart, check they'll also check this hash of this block. If there is any difference in the hash, they know that they have right? They will reject the block. Not only they'll reject this block, they'll go to previous block also. They'll say, there is no problem. They'll keep going back. So let's say the last 10 blocks may that hash has changed. So you put a branch where 10 blocks are, they will reject it. That will not be part of blockchain. So this is how you are very sure that uh, data is not changed. Okay? Thousands of people are checking every second. Or other hash, if somebody changes one transaction, this hash will change. If the hash changes within in less than a couple of minutes, the network will know and they will reject it. So it is a really very safe. That is, the data cannot be changed at all. So how is it used? Uh, this is included in the next block to ensure integrity. So people know that everything is correct, right? So this hash will change. So this is the way they ensure that transactions are securely stored and blockchain cannot be tampered with. So is it detectable? Yes, is it detectable within a few minutes, right? Within a few minutes, uh, the network will know that somebody has tampered data or they will, uh, they will go back in the chain to see till where <coughs> the hash is different. <coughs> and from there, they will just uh, reject the entire branch. So some common blockchain myths only used for cryptocurrency, not right. So today blockchain is being used for, so somebody had a question where all it is used. It is used in supply chain, it is used in uh, finance, it is used in uh, so many areas, used in pharmaceutical industry. Uh, wherever your data needs to be safe, you can use blockchain. It is always anonymous. So in old days, uh, the blockchain transaction were anonymous, but today it is not so. For example, in India, if you want to buy a cryptocurrency, you have to go to an exchange, right? So government of India has made a regulation that the exchange has to share the name of all buyers and sellers and all their KYC with the Indian government. So now the anonymity is not there in India. In some other countries, it is uh, still anonymous. Only use of financial transactions is a myth. It can be used for many kind of transactions. Is always decentralized? No. So you can have something called a private blockchain also, where some, some company owns a blockchain. So it centralized, it won't be decentralized. It is unregulated, is a myth. It is uh, like in India, like I said, uh, exchanges have to give all the information. So slowly regulations are coming into place. The biggest disadvantage is use too much energy. Uh, there's limited adoption. Lack of standardization, like Bitcoin is a different kind of blockchain. Ethereum is different kind of blockchain. And there are so many kinds of blockchain today. Polkadot is different kind of blockchain. And these different blockchains cannot operate with each other because they are built on different platforms. So there's limited interoperability, right? Anonymity is going away, not fully regulated. But of course, even though not fully regulated, you cannot escape the taxes on it. <coughs> so summary of benefits, uh, it eliminates the need for intermediaries. Transparency is achieved by, so her transaction is published. But the Jojo, uh, blockchain network, they can see every transaction of every person. Okay. So full transparency is there. Uh, 
इम्यूटेबिलिटी लाइक ए सेट अगर कोई कहीं भी कुछ चेंज करने की कोशिश करेगा दैट हैश विल चेंज एंड दैट ब्लॉक विल बी रिजेक्टेड राइट सो डेटा कैन नॉट बी चेंज ऑन ब्लॉक चेन एंड देन देर समथिंग कॉल्ड स्मार्ट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विच आई कवर विच ऑटोमेट द प्रोसेस ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एग्जीक्यूशन एंड ट्रेसिबिलिटी so in this way blockchain technology helps to streamline the supply chain processes so how has blockchain evolved so uh, after the bitcoin network was hacked for first time then somebody came up with a more robust a uh, more uh, secure blockchain uh, which was the ethereum blockchain basically right so uh, it was called by some people as blockchain 2 and it brought new features like smart contract decentralized application d apps D apps is nothing but so application you know is a software right? So decentralized application means a software which is running on a blockchain network that is called a decentralized app or D app. D apps it is called D apps and ability to create an issue new token or cryptocurrency right? So uh, either there this cryptocurrency is called token or it is called a coin. So for example, if जो बिटकॉइन है बिटकॉइन का अपना ब्लॉकचेन है राइट तो अगर अपना ब्लॉकचेन है नेटिव ब्लॉकचेन है करेंसी का इट इज कॉल्ड अ कॉइन अगर आपने क्रिप्टो करेंसी बनाया किसी और के ब्लॉकचेन पे राइट जैसे पोलका टॉट इज अ ब्लॉकचेन प्लेटफॉर्म इवन यू कैन गो देयर आई कैन गो देयर वी कैन क्रिएट अर ओन क्रिप्टो करेंसी राइट तो इफ यू क्रिएट अ क्रिप्टो करेंसी ऑन समबडी एल्स ब्लॉक चेन इट इज कॉल्ड अ टोकन ओके बट टोकन एंड कॉइन टोकन एंड कॉइन बोथ अ क्रिप्टो करेंसी smart contract is a computer program so all of you know what is a contract right it's a legal agreement between two people there are certain things which are essential for a valid contract which all of you studied in contract act right so smart contract may be for it to be valid same rules apply it is just that yahan pe paper ke upar sign nahi hai basically smart contract is a piece of computer code okay in the computer code the triggers are built in matlab ki in a smart contract you can say ki जैसे गुड्स रिसीव हो विद इन ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स पेमेंट शुड गो बैक शुड बी सेंड टू द सेलर ऑफ द गुड्स टू द वेंडर राइट सो इफ देर स्मार्ट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट लाइक दिस देन द बायर डजेंट हैव टू डू एनीथिंग राइट द स्मार्ट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इट सेल्फ विल सेंस फ्रॉम ई आर पी क्या ओके गुड्स एव बिन रिसीव इन द ई आर पी समथिंग लाइक गुड्स रिसीव नोट वुड हैव बिन जनरेटेड द मोमेंट द स्मार्ट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट सेंसेस की ओके गुड्स पहुंच गए and there's no problem in the goods uh, goods receipt note has been sent saying that uh, properly received the smart contract will immediately trigger the payment within 24 hours so without the buyer doing anything the smart contract will execute so because the the smart contract is a self executing uh, program it is more safe that is if you have a legal agreement uh, the person who is who has to make the payment has a choice even though they may have promised ki mai bhej dunga payment sath din mein right but then in reality they may not send in 7 days they may send in 14 days 15 days 30 days or they may say ki nahi bhejta jo karna tha to right that can also happen but smart contract that's not possible the computer program will ensure that payment goes right so smart contracts are programs that execute exactly as they are set up as they are as the coding is done by the creators so whether it's enforceable by law or not depends on are all the elements of valid contract there or not right if all the elements of valid contract are there in the smart contract it's enforceable by law otherwise it is not so blockchain 2 is not a official term it is uh, basically the next generation of blockchain i can see some questions but let me cover uh, this section before i go to questions uh, the following are some essential characteristics it is on a distributed network right so because द स्मार्ट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इज स्टोर ऑन ब्लॉक चेन एक बार वो कॉन्ट्रैक्ट स्टोर हो गया कोई भी जाके उसको चेंज नहीं कर सकता राइट इट्स द मिनिस्टिक इट ओनली परफॉर्म फंक्शन फॉर विच दे आर डिजाइन द फाइनल आउटकम विल नॉट वेरी जैसे कि पेमेंट होना है तो होना है राइट और इट कुड बी समथिंग एल्स वट एवर एल्स सो इट कैन इवन बी प्रोग्राम टू से ओके इफ पेमेंट डजेंट हैपन विद इन दिस डेट सो मच पेनल्टी शुड बी चार्ज सो ऑल ऑफ दीज कैन बी कोडेड इन टू द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट and it's immutable immutable ka matlab hai data koi badal nahi sakta right data once it is uh, put on blockchain nobody can change it it's customizable of course a contract has to be customizable everybody has different terms it is transparent ek bar wo blockchain pe dal diya everybody can see the terms 
सो थिंग्स लाइक दिस आर वॉट मेक पीपल इन सप्लाई चेन लिटिल वेरी की हाउ कैन वी शो आर कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विच शोज आर प्राइसिंग एंड ऑल दैट टू एवरीबडी एल्स राइट Uh, but once you put on block chain everybody can see it so there are ways around it which i'll cover uh, then it is trustless money there is no uh, central authority in between like a bank they are self verifying that is uh, the the smart contract itself will verify from erp ki okay goods are received and sent a payment or it, uh, it, at some point some data is entered into uh, some electronic system which is pulled by the blockchain network and the terms of contract then get executed it is self enforcing that is when conditions and rules are met at all stages so this thing about uh, self verifying is very important because uh, uh, i'll tell you a real case so this happened to one of my uncles he was uh, letting out uh, he wanted to rent his uh, apartment in uh, uh, kolkata right so broker brought somebody and they showed him the showed my uncle the contract and my uncle is old man right he was like 70 plus so he read it slowly he said ha theek hai theek hai this acha iska print out kar le he said ha layout print out so when they were uh, took it for print out while printing out the these guys were that guy was like a crook he deleted the termination clause hota hai contract mein right how to exit from the agreement to wo clause usne delete kar diya and they just printed out and my uncle just signed it and later on he had a lot of trouble getting the client uh, getting the tenant to leave because the termination uh, clause was not there right so these kind of things which happen in real life can be completely controlled once you have uh, verified ki these terms are fine it is put on blockchain uske baad koi change nahi kar sakta right nobody can change one page in the middle of contract it's just not possible so all this makes it ultra safe so you identify the agreement you set the conditions ki if this happens then do this if it doesn't happen then do this all these condition can be set then code in the business logic right this like i said it's computer code it has to execute so all that logic of these conditions is coded into the smart contract and then this is encrypted and put on the blockchain and uh, based on triggers it received this ki goods pahunch gaya ya goods nahi pahuncha ya payment aa gaya whatever uh, the code will execute and once it is once it executes uh, jo bhi transaction hua with that execution that is updated to the network that means that goes and gets stored on the public ledger in all the computers so advantage of blockchain to no single point of failure ka matlab hai ki let's say uh, this is a network controlled by amazon to agar amazon ka data center suppose there is a big fire and the whole data center goes down uh the whole amazon network may fall right but if you don't have any central point where there are let's say uh, one lakh computers jiske upar blockchain network hai usme se 10000 computer fail bhi ho gaye still as long as some computers are running the network is still up okay so there is no single point of failure it can be viewed by anyone on network because public no intermediary so if there are less middlemen एक तो प्रोसेसिंग कम होगा और कॉस्ट भी लोअर होगा बिकॉज मिडल मैन आर नॉट थिंकिंग मार्जिन एंड नो इन्फॉर्मेशन गेट शेयर टू थर्ड पार्टीज मतलब यू कैन क्रिएट अ परमिशन ब्लॉक चेन मतलब राधर देन पब्लिक ब्लॉक चेन यू कैन से ऑन दिस नेटवर्क ओनली द पीपल ऑन दिस नेटवर्क कैन सी पब्लिक कैन नॉट सी ओके दिस इज पॉसिबल विद ब्लॉक चेन टू एंड यू कैन ऑटोमेट एग्जीक्यूशन ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट थ्रू स्मार्ट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट सो वॉट इज द इको सिस्टम uh these are the things that form the blockchain ecosystem let's cover them one by one so the players in blockchain are the software developers the miners or validators you have the users who are uh, then you have the investors and you have the institutions institutions also can buy and sell crypto and then you have regulatory bodies which are slowly trying to regulate so governments don't like crypto kyunki ye pura secret hai anonymous hai so people can send terrorist funds or they can do money laundering and government will not come to know so slowly governments around the world are starting to regulate it then the infrastructure are the com- nodes which are computers consensus mechanism is how do the people on network agree ke transaction theek hai ya nahi right so uh, on bitcoin it is proof of work matlab ki whichever miner solves the puzzle the fastest they get to uh, create the new block and receive the reward uh, 
So like that, there are different consensus mechanisms. So uh, in some blockchains, for example, there's proof of stake. Matlab, jiska stake, stake wale share, share of that blockchain is highest. Uh, they can uh, they can add the block. So let's say that uh, I have 20% and my friend has 35% of a certain blockchain network. So we both have 55% ho gaya, right? So then only if we say that this is okay, then it's okay because we are controlling 55%. So real life, mein, people cannot own such big percentage. Normally, people own micro percentage like 0 0.001, 0 0.0001, those kind of percentages. So for people to control the network is very difficult because there are so many lakhs of computers. Then smart contract is also part of infrastructure. Cryptography, we covered already. Interoperability is the piece of software that allows one platform to talk to another platform. It could be as simple as something like an API, or it could be some custom built uh, adapter which connects one platform to another. So consensus mechanism is a way for computers in a blockchain network to agree on the validity of transactions. And once they say ki ye valid hai, then it can be added as a new block to the blockchain network. So then you have hardware like mining rigs, ASICs are Mining rig is a generic machine that or a computer that can be used for any blockchain network. Jo ASIC hai, these are very specific. They say they are special ASIC for only Bitcoin, a special ASIC computer only for Ethereum. Uh, then you have the graphic processing units like NVIDIA makes type. These speed up the computer speed, uh, the speed of processing of computers. Uh, then you have storage devices and you have hardware wallets. We'll cover wallets too. Uh, then you have software, which is wallet. So a digital wallet is nothing but software, right? It's not like a wallet you carry in your pocket. It's just a piece of code. Then you have blockchain explorer, just like you have internet explorer. You have decentralized applications. We covered it. You have smart contact platforms. And then uh, you have these different platforms like Ethereum, Bitcoin, Binance. Binance is the number one exchange of crypto in the world. Polkadot is, again, a very popular blockchain platform on which you can go and create your own cryptocurrency. Now, Ethereum, Bitcoin, pe, you can't create your own currency. But on Polkadot, you can create your own cryptocurrency. Similarly, Cardano, etc. And then protocols are rules and standards that govern the functioning of blockchain networks. So we have different kind of uh, protocols uh, for the different layers and for decentralized finance. So DEFI stands for decentralized finance. Again, the word decentralized here means ki, to financial transaction over. Uske beech mein koi bank nahi hoga. It'll be peer to peer, right? And cross chain protocols. Let's say you want to sell Bitcoin and buy Ethereum. So either you go to exchange that supports both, or if your exchange doesn't support a different Bitcoin protocol, then you will use cross chain protocol to make the transaction. Then there could be privacy protocols as well. And then services are the exchange where you can buy and sell crypto. Uh, custody solution. Custody solution means uh, you're saying, ki, I'm not sure I can keep this cryptocurrency safe. Hack ho jayega, right? Hack ho sakta hai, matlab. So you may tell the exchange, ki, you hold my currency for me. right? So that's a custody solution. Then the analytics providers will crunch all the data, give you insights, ki, uh, which cryptocurrency is going up, which is going down, what are the factors. Uh, then development service. So some company wants to develop a blockchain network of its own or it wants to put its data on the blockchain. So they'll go to development services like software companies, right? And then the consulting services. So these are people who will come in and advise the company and they'll help the company to get on blockchain. And then you have the regulatory environment. So a lot of money is exchanging hands. Government wants to know about the legality of the money, right? Yeah, black money, hai, white money, hai, is tax being paid on it? Is it uh, terrorist money or is it money laundering? So laws and regulations are coming in. Tax implications are already there. KYC requirements have become compulsory in India. In some countries, it is still not compulsory. Then the anti-money laundering policies also are compulsory in India. And international cooperation between different countries. So uh, let's say Indian goes and uh, does a lot of money laundering in, let's say, Switzerland. But India has an agreement with the government of Switzerland where the government of Switzerland will give this information to Indian government. So that's the international cooperation part. So now we come to blockchain in supply chain. So why has uh, it been slow to be adopted? Because it is high cost and complex. It's a complex technology. 
there are lack of standards. Standards are coming in now. There's a resistance to change. Anything new, people will resist, right? Benefits are not clear. Most people don't know what blockchain is, how it is useful. So benefits are not clear to users. So more education has to come. And there are privacy concerns. That is, people feel that if the whole data is on public blockchain, pe chal jai, so then my trade secret will be lost. People will know where I'm buying for, from, how much I'm buying for, right? And new competitors may come in because they can see all my data, right? So these are the concerns people have and there are ways around each of this. So let's see how. So blockchain protocol for Bitcoin takes care of following. Uh, that is, if you're uh, making a cryptocurrency transaction, you're selling or buying Bitcoin, you can make a, you can sell or buy without a bank in between. You can be completely anonymous if you are in a country that allows it, like Switzerland or Singapore. You can remain anonymous. Creates an immutable record, but the data of the transaction cannot be changed by anyone. Provides a secure, highly secure environment for transaction. It's very difficult to hack. Removes the possibility of double spend. Double spend ka matlab hai ki, let's say uh, you are buying something online, right? So when internet was not very fast, what would happen is ki that transaction would take time, right? We have already purchased something online, right? Abhi transaction complete hua nahi hai. Let's say it takes, let's assume ki ek minute lagta transaction complete hone mein. So until the, okay, thank you Bhagashi. So I can continue at 11.15, okay. So before that one minute, uh, before the transaction completes, that money is still in my wallet. So within that one minute, it's hypothetically possible ki mein kuch aur bhi kharir loo. This is the same money, saath, right? Because it's not in my wallet. Mein hai. So that is the problem of double spend. So this double spend can never happen in Bitcoin because when the transaction is complete, uh, only when the transaction completes, the money will go from your wallet to that wallet. In meantime, you cannot make another transaction of the, uh, using same cryptocurrency and provides proof of ownership of cryptocurrency. So cryptocurrency is a digital piece of code. It doesn't mean a coin. Nahi hai. It is, pocket right? It is just a piece of code. It is stored in a digital wallet, which is also a piece of code, right? So, is how ownership can prove it? The proof of ownership is stored on the blockchain. So, when I buy from, let's say, I buy from Manoj, right? So, on the blockchain, it will be recorded that I purchased five Bitcoin. Vikas purchased five Bitcoin from Manoj, right? So. Uh, when that uh, transaction is done, the proof of ownership also is recorded on the Bitcoin. So when I try to sell this, first the network will see, see ki, does this guy really have that Bitcoin or not, right? They'll check and see, ha, iske paas hai. So then they will allow the transaction. So proof of ownership of cryptocurrency is also very clear. Nobody can change it. However, ye jo Everything that you are doing for cryptocurrency transaction is completely different from what you require for supply chain management. Okay, so let's see how. So in supply chain, you cannot use a public blockchain because you, your data needs to be protected. So you have something called permission blockchain. Permission blockchain ka matlab hai ki blockchain is not open to public. Jo aapke supply chain mein layers hai, whoever you want to expose data to, only they will see it. Okay. You can control who sees the data. So the advantage of permission blockchain is it is more secure because only authorized users can access the network. They are more efficient because come transaction order, so it is faster, right? And they are more scalable because it can be tailored to specific needs. And then disadvantage we have because public network because public network is uh, run by so many people, so always that will be cheaper. If you set up a private system, it will be more expensive. And it will be less transparent. Matlab, the public cannot come and see your data, which is actually good. They may be less decentralized. Matlab, if some company has set up their own blockchain, then it will decentralized. Nahi abhi. Abhi wo centralized blockchain. Ban gaya. Because one company is controlling the whole thing. So in supply chain, it is used for track and trace. right? All of you know what is track and trace, I'm sure. Uh, it refers to the ability to identify the location of the inventory. Any time in the past, but the Dodin Pelekata, Abhika, uh, Ekin Kabat Kauka. Uh, all of this can be uh, seen from the uh, blockchain through track and trace. 
So track and trace is done right from the, uh, let's say if you're talking about diamonds, right from the mining of diamonds until the final retail customer buys it, right? And tracking provenance. So since we're talking about diamonds, uh, provenance of diamond means ki diamond authentic hai ani, ye real hai ki nahi. Or ye kon se mines aya, right? So there is, like we spoke about question of uh, ethical sourcing for lithium. Same thing applies to diamond. Matlab, diamond se aata hai, mostly those countries have a lot of wars. Don't say we countries say block, uh, diamonds are in, they have a lot of wars and fighting because always rival groups are trying to take over the government and control the diamond. Matlab, there's a lot of money, obviously, right? So the uh, people around the world, they came to agreement ki jo conflict diamonds, hai, jo war mein se hai diamonds, wo diamonds should not be allowed to get into supply chain, right? So one is proving uh, product authenticity, diamond real like any. Second, ye kahan se aaya diamond? Even that is traced through the blockchain. Moreover, blockchain allows multiple parties to uh, transact on it. So top level benefits are these, improves transparency and traceability efficiency, right? Also allows tracking of products, quality control and payment processing. So top level benefits are self-executing contracts using smart contracts. So smart contracts are only on Ethereum, okay? They're not there on Bitcoin network. And prevention of fraud, sustainability, like we spoke about, uh, these are eco-friendly practices in the supply chain. So basically even simple thing like you're now not using paper at every stage, everything is digital. This is also a green initiative, right? It is reducing paper usage, which means you're cutting less trees. So let's look at a case study quickly. So uh, diamond trade is a multi-billion dollar industry, but plagued by problems such as what I mentioned, conflict diamonds. These are also called blood diamonds. Because they both out of the blood of diamonds, right? So there was something called the Kimberley Process Certification Scheme established about 20 years back to prevent such blood diamonds from entering the market. But it has not been too effective because it's not traceability. Where is the diamond, right? And then there are many fake diamonds, like, you know, uh, and there are also uh, artificially created diamonds, right? And the artificial diamonds are so good today, the quality is so good that uh, if you show uh, artificial diamond and real diamond to a very experienced jeweler, that person cannot make out. They look identical. There's no difference in both. The only way you can make out is by checking the specific gravity. Specific gravity will be different. But then if you're just examining it, there's no difference at all. So a lot of fraud is there. Uh, so typically, even somebody who buys, let's say you're a retail customer, you want to, you're getting engaged, you want to buy a diamond solitaire ring, right? So you're not going to go and check the uh, specific gravity of it, right? You want to even know ki asa kuch hai. You might just trust the jeweler and buy it, but it might be fake diamond. Then there's lack of transparency because people don't know ki ye, uh, blood diamond hai, ye se aaya, right? And then diamond chain is very huge. You have the mines, you have the trader of rough diamonds. There's diamond cutting, polishing, grading. Then diamond trader will come in. They sell to jewelry manufacturers uh, who will in turn sell to jewelry wholesalers or other intermediaries like stockist or distributor. Then retailer comes in and finally goes to the consumer. So a lot of information is stored at every stage mining. At mining, you have a lot of information after mining, before transportation, during transportation, after receipt uh, by buyer of rough. So at every stage, there is enormous amount of data stored. Okay. And that's just the first level of information, just the tip of iceberg. So iske ilawa, there's underlying data, there are commercial documents, there are transport documents, there are regulatory documents like import license, export license, uh, or different kind of cert government certification. There are trade contracts, there is derived data. Then intra-company means uh, uh, documents between different departments of a company and inter-company documents. But there's huge amount of data. So what you saw on the previous uh, slide is just the tip of the iceberg. There's huge amount of data. And ye jitte players hai ya, jise mine, miner ho gaya, trader ho gaya, manufacturer, wholesaler, retailer. Ye sab kya alag alag apne accounting system, alag alag ERP hai. So ye apne, apne transactions, ye alag alag systems mein record ho rahe hai, right? So there is no common system between all these people. It is all 
fragmented across multiple uh, systems. So integrating all these different ERPs can be right, but oh, is a problem. Some people may not even have ERP. They may have some small accounting software, right? Uh, somebody may say, I QuickBooks use QuickBooks, I don't even have an ERP. Then all the players may not agree to share data because of privacy concern. So yes, up say it becomes very difficult to prove ki ye diamond aya kaan se or ye authentic hai ani, right? So this is where the problem begins. Lastly, unbroken chain of custody is difficult to prove. Matlab ki jo, uh, let's say jo, uh, diamond trader hai, waan se jo diamond nikla, is it the same as the one that is uh, reached the retailer or has somebody changed it in between? That is also a problem, right? So how does blockchain solve this? Now, first of all, every diamond is issued a unique digital identity that is recorded on the blockchain, okay? This includes information such as the diamond's origin, date of extraction. Total transparency allows the diamond's digital identity to be tracked. So each time it is sold from the miner to the trader, or from trader to jewelry manufacturer, at every stage, the digital identity is cross-checked from blockchain and uh, uh, recorded again. Every time the ownership changes, that is also recorded on blockchain. So like you know, now any data we enter on blockchain can't be changed, right? Then the use of blockchain technology can help to prevent conflict diamonds from entering market by making it easier to track and trace. So now you're tracing from the mine right up to the last consumer, the consumer who buys. So it's very easy to prove ki ha ye asli diamond hai and uh, from where it has come. But of course, many people would still have a doubt, right? Ki, uh, is it the same diamond or has somebody changed the diamond, right? So even for that, you need to do things uh, which I'll cover in future slides. So the people who typically record this transaction, they could be a blockchain consortium or a government agency. For example, uh, you have a consortium called Blockchain in Trucking Alliance, where trucking related data for the US is recorded, right? As a, uh, we don't have such a body in India yet, but I'm sure it will come. So how do you make sure that diamond is the same? Of course, jo digital mein hai, blockchain mein hai, all the data can't be changed. But if diamond is changed, then what For that also, you have some offline activities. That is, a unique identification code to banai, right? Uh, which is identified with the diamond. Uh, they take detailed high-resolution photographs. So when an expert uh, takes a photograph again, wherever uh, it reaches in supply chain, they can compare with the original photographs. And uh, they can check the same diamond hai so it has details such as inclusions. Inclusions are small defects in the diamond or the facets are the uh, cut faces of the diamond or unique characteristics. So of course, because cutting is done manually, so every diamond is as different as a fingerprint, right? You'll never find two identical diamonds. So these images are stored off chain and blockchain will store a reference ki ye hai images, right? Then there are also laser encryption. So ye jo unique identification code hai, with a laser, it is written in a very small, you know, microscopic letters on the outer edge of the stone, right? So this also can be read and you can see that this is the same uh, diamond. Then you could have uh, uh, laboratory verifications, secure packaging and sealing, that is you could have hologram uh, uh, seals that will tell you or tamper-proof packaging. If somebody opens a package, you'll know that it has been opened, right? So in many different ways, uh, and then you have compliance and industry standards, uh, such as the Kimberley process certification scheme. You have grading and certificates. So when the diamonds are graded, they are also they issue a certificate, which uh, data gets stored on the blockchain. Then uh, authorized handlers and trusted partner, partners only will manage the supply chain to ensure the safety of the product. So, because of these reasons, uh, so it's a combination of offline and on online activities, but then uh, by applying blockchain to something like diamond industry, you can know where it has come from, whether it got replaced in between, is it genuine or not, what are stages it went through, and uh, is it authentic or not. So the same thing like you can see can be applied to pharmaceutical industry, 
it can be applied to financial transactions it can be applied to anything basically it can be applied to things that are only online it can be applied to things that are combination of online and offline as well so can the process be automated yes it can be using smart contracts like we saw smart contracts and automatically it got the transfer of diamonds from one party to another automatically verify ki diamond original hai nahi automatically trigger payments and they can also track the carbon carbon footprint so that can also be recorded on the blockchain so uh, people can see uh, diamond of different companies sold by different companies which has got the least environmental impact which is the more green diamond and they can choose to purchase uh, more of that so in summary it provides accuracy blockchain is tamper proof data cannot be altered it provides traceability right from mine to the final consumer it's very cost efficient right uh, because intermediaries are reduced and it is all digital manual is being here right or both are automated via so kafi cost bach jata hai it's very transparent uh, so transparent yahan ka matlab hai it's a permission blockchain remember so all the uh, players on the same supply chain can see it but public cannot see it but the players can have full transparency and it's very secure and tamper proof right so uh, i have just a couple of minutes more if i may so does scm apply to digital products so nowadays products are not just physical they can be digital as well right so it can apply to digital assets in fact uh, supply chain management for digital asset involves also same thing like ownership location status of digital asset and uh, the number of challenges involved in proving the ownership providing a authentic any digital asset is it authentic or is it a copy right to ye sab kaise pata kare you can use uh, you have to use blockchain for doing it just like for diamonds by tracking the movement of digital asset through blockchain business can identify and mitigate risk so even if it's a digital product uska physical koi product hai nahi the same principle will apply so for example you have nfts right nft stands for non fungible token which means it's a unique digital asset matlab ki uh, fung- non fungible ka matlab hai ki is is tarah ka duniya mein ek hi piece hai right it is completely unique it's like a painting by a famous artist by let's say hussein so waisa painting duniya mein ek hi hai right so similarly you have a uh, digital asset where there's only one copy right so there's something called uh, so these nfts can be anything it can be art music videos it can be computer graphics or even quids anything that is uh, digital can become a nft so there is this company called board uh, bayc board ap yacht club which issued a collection of 10000 unique digital apes and they sold it as nfts and these became immensely popular uh, that means a lot of celebrities purchased it and uh, these were 10000 variations of it they all had different uh, uh, hair color and different clothes and different caps and different accessories all 10000 were unique okay and out of those this one the one you see uh, bayc number 8817 this was auctioned and sold for 3.4 million dollars he actually had gif right it's a i mean you can take a screenshot of this i already have this on the slide right but the person who owns the original the original ek hai and the information is stored on bitcoin the ownership is stored on bitcoin and this was sold for 3.4 million dollars just a computer graphic right of course uh, what time there a lot of celebrities are buying so there was huge demand and people paid large amount today the same nft if you uh, want to buy it you can buy it for the person who bought for 3.4 3.4 million dollars now he is willing to sell for 60000 dollars kyunki ye amount ko dene ke liye taiyar nahi hai right so nfts are relatively new they rely on rarity or ownership or collectability so ownership ka matlab hai you get full commercial rights let's say you purchase that ap image you want to put it on t-shirts you want to use as logo all that you can do and uh, it allows collectability it allows access to Uh, exclusive uh, member only areas of your club etc so that is why people will buy nfts so uh, the new trend now the cm is not just physical products but also digital products will have to be managed under scm and scm has to seamlessly integrate new payment modes buy now pay later 
NFC and payments payments are the tap you just tap your card and gets paid or tap your phone and payment goes biometric enabled either through your fingerprint or for facial recognition card to codes ka matlab hai ki the there's a new technology which tokenizes your card number matlab you enter your card number somewhere there's a computer code which converts it into something else right and that is called a uh, tokenized becomes a code and that code only goes to merchant to merchant ko aapka card details kabhi nahi milega right they will only see the tokenized version of your uh, card number then there are also smart speaker payments so you can use alexa or google home and through your uh, uh, music device also you can make a payment then there are digital wallets so these are all the new payment modes that have to integrate with supply chain so a wallet like i said is a software program that stores cryptocurrency uh digital wallet actually does not keep the currency itself but it stores the private key so in crypto transaction you have something called public key and private key right so agar aapko kisi se payment lena hai to aap public key uh, key denge unko ki this is my public key payment bhejna to yahan bhej do but private key is used only by you it is uh, you will never tell anyone matlab jiske paas bhi private key hai they can send money from your wallet to anywhere else right so that has to be totally guarded matlab jisko paise bhejna hai they will use their private key aur jo public key hai you can uh, distribute freely to everyone people can send you money on that so digital wallets can be hot or cold hot matlab it is connected to internet uh, agar connected to internet hai matlab it can be hacked also right cold wallet matlab they are not connected to internet internet so they are very safe so it could be even a thumb drive ki thumb drive ke upar aapne apna cryptocurrency uh, uh, uh store kiya but here the thing is uh, if you forget your private key or if you lose a device let's say aapne ek external hard disk mein apna hazard uh, bitcoin rakha hua hai aur wo gum gaya hard disk that is gone no way to recover that's completely gone it's vanish you have lost the money ya aap apna private key bhul gaye that money is gone nothing can be done about it so here are some popular wallets metamask is really popular in india and uh, supply chain need to uh, connect to all these new kinds of payment that are coming in which could be biometric social payments amazon dash uh, once cars get connected to each other so the new trend for cars is also to be internet enabled you can make payments with a car also right then there are beacons in store beacon in store matlab ki uh, there there are no sales people in the store you walk into the store you buy your things there are some beacons beacon means sensors lage hue hain so when you pick up something and put it in your uh, shopping uh, bag uh, that gets automatically built so when you are leaving uh, the sensors will tell ki ye bag mein kya kya hai aur uska uh, it will build and automatically that money will go from your wallet so you don't have to stand in a queue to for billing either so these are new things coming in uh, and with that we come to end of the session so now i can take questions If you have uh, time. So, with your permission, can we take only one question? Because yes, in yes. next ten minutes, we need to start with the next session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was. Uh, yes. Yeah. So I have a question. Yeah. So, is NFT a cryptocurrency or a token? Uh, no, it is a digital asset. It is not a cryptocurrency. You will use cryptocurrency to buy NFT. It is a digital asset. Sir, a PPT link should be sir. Yeah. Need PPT link, sir. uh okay so i'll coordinate with the uh, facilitator details and do that yes so you can share with uh, us and we can forward it yeah, to students yeah yeah madam please provide madam okay any questions anybody else two three minutes uh like i said you all can also ask questions on linkedin so i think we are very short of time but if anybody has question i think uh, one or two more we can quickly take any questions anyone yes sir we can definitely take one or two questions so students if you have any please ask put it in the uh, on the chat box so that i can just uh, ask him that as well yeah i hope i hope uh, you all made sense of it and uh, it was good learning for all of you so these are the new trends coming in so very important for everyone to know right thank you sashna there are no questions okay, uh, but great. students have definitely liked it All right. Yes. Thanks for that. <laughs> so, Sashna, yes. you can take it ahead. 
yes sir so uh, as we always do students please uh, switch on your camera so that we can have a good picture with sir and keep it that as a memory for 2023 uh, conclave so i request my team to kindly take a screenshot before uh, proposing the vote of thanks to sir i hope to see more smiles before the photo yeah you can click a picture thank you everyone i got one screenshot i'm taking another one all right thanks everyone i really enjoyed it i hope you all enjoyed it too bye everyone yes sir it was our honor sir to have you for this uh, spectrum uh, 2023 conclave uh, the insights and the examples which you shared were truly valuable and we would love to have many more insightful sessions of you in the future so thank you so much thank you thanks again uh, my pleasure bye thank everyone. you sir bye sir